Shouldn't she be in prison by now? Darlene asked, looking over my shoulder. I followed her gaze, and my eyes fell upon Tony Agnello, the tomboy who made high school hell for me. Yes, I know every kid gets bullied, but trust me, I had it worse than most. Tony pulled my hair, beat me up, banged my locker door against my hands, told on me to teachers when I did nothing wrong, and stole my most prized possession, my autographed picture of Nancy McKeon from The Facts of Life. <laughs> to answer your first question, no, I didn't know I was gay. To answer your second, yes, I know I should have. <laughs> She hasn't changed all that much, Darling said. No, I remarked as I watched Tony awkwardly bopping around to Bananarama. Twenty years later and she still can't dance worth shit. Still has the mullet, Darling noted. And still thinks flannel is appropriate formal wear, I added. Before you yell at me, yes, I know we were being mean, but I think I get a free pass as Tony had terrorized me for years and I was sure I never felt the slightest bit of remorse. I admired her for that. I often wished I was more like her because then I wouldn't have been such a victim. But alas, my mother had handicapped me by giving me a conscience. <laughs> Standing there, staring at Tony, I suddenly had an urge to grab her and drag her down into the punch bowl. It was good to know I hadn't matured over the past two decades. Do you remember how she got in between you and Lena, darling asked? I'm not discussing Lena. Lena, who was pretending I didn't exist while she stood by a wall with some jerky-looking guy, was my very straight, very platonic high school sweetheart. Every confused gay girl has to have one. It's practically a requirement of being queer. <laughs> Ask your lesbian friends. Buy them some drinks and they'll regale you with tales of tortured romantic friendships <laughs> that left them with more evenings of blue clit than they care to remember. <laughs> Lena was a real winner, a girl who could have given Catherine Zeta-Jones a run for her money. Jade green eyes, glossy black hair, ridiculously adult cleavage. She was also bright and more than a bit mischievous. In two weeks, she and I became friends. We were together so much, my brother once asked if we even shit together. A classy kind of guy, my brother is. Anyway, that all changed when Tony started chatting Lena up. I don't know what she told her, but I know she never spoke to me again. It took four more years and a woman built like Pamela Anderson before I could properly recover. <laughs> was Tony hot for Lena? I never knew. Tony was one of those girls everyone suspected of being gay, but she still went out with guys. Maybe they were covers, or maybe she was fool enough to think she was straight. Last I heard, she even had a serious boyfriend. Poor sucker. She's staring right at you, Darlene said. Tony was staring at me and smiling as if to rub the whole Lena thing in my face again. Come on, let's go, I said. I've had enough of this bullshit. Hey, Tony called from across the room. Just keep walking, I said to Darlene, ignore her. Hey, one foot in front of the other, I said. Hey, we better stop, Darlene said. Hey, Elizabeth, is that you, Tony asked. Yep, I said, it's me. You aren't leaving, are you? I'm afraid I am, I said. Well, don't go just yet. We haven't even gotten to talking. She was smiling. I realized I was now five inches taller than her. This reassured me, but only slightly. I wondered if I could take her down all these years later. I'd certainly love to try, but we both had crow's feet and some gray hair. It wouldn't have been the most appropriate, age-appropriate thing to do. I have to get back, I said. I have kids, Tony asked. No. A husband? No. A dog? No. Well, not since Banjo died. Good, she said cheerfully. Well, I mean, not about Banjo, but good that you have no reason for going right now. I have something I want to talk to you about. Now, I don't know. Come on, I won't keep you long. Before I could protest, she put an arm around me and we started walking. Darlene didn't even look back at me as she ran toward the exit. Lucky bitch. So, Elizabeth, I want to apologize. Tony's breath smelled of gin. Apparently, she needed liquor to be remorseful. At least that explained why she couldn't be nice to me when we were younger. <laughs> you don't need to apologize. I said, even though she'd done enough damage that now my therapist could afford that second house in the Hamptons. <laughs> Bygones, I said. Well, Tony said, that was easier than I thought it'd be. Why, did you think I'd burn you at the stake, I asked, and picture doing that? No, but I did think you'd get a little angrier. Anger so solves nothing. How very Deepak Chopra of you, Tony said, while massaging my neck. Truth was, she was pretty darn cute. Sure, she had the bad hair and worse fashion sense, but she was quite the handsome little bunch, and I was quite the horny little fan. Uh, what are you doing, I asked. You seem stressed out. I can sense the tension from here. I know, I do this for a living. Now there was irony. Hands that had once caused me pain were now giving others pleasure. 
that guy has quite a sense of humor on him. I looked around worried that someone would see us. My high school class was a pretty conservative bunch, and I was sure at least one right-wing nutcase would object to two middle-aged dykes engaging in foreplay. But no one said a thing. I guess they were like us, three sheets to the wind. Tony kept massaging my neck, but it felt like she was massaging my clit. Good Lord, how long had it been since a woman last touched me? Actually, it had been four years. My last lover, Mimi, was fun but frustrating. She loved to spank me, which was a problem, as I prefer being a spanker. We didn't break up over that, but it made the sex much less satisfying than it could have been. I was so cruel to you when we were kids, Tony said. I deserve to be punished for what I've done. Uh-huh, I said, grabbing a mini hot dog from a tray. I tried not to think about <laughs> what it looked like as I shoved it into my mouth. And just what kind of punishment were you counting on? She leaned in closer and whispered, one that involves my bare ass and your cruel hand. Uh-huh, I said again, nervously gulping my fifth martini. So you're into that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, and by the look in your eyes, I'd say you were too, little miss not so innocent. Tell me, do you like to give spankings? I couldn't even speak. I settled for rapid nodding. Good, I know where we can go so you can give me all the punishment I need. She grabbed my hand and we walked away from the tacky streamers, deflated balloons, disco ball, dash streams. She took me to a quiet spot outside. We could get caught, I said. Makes it more exciting, she said. So how shall I worship you this evening? I almost burst out laughing. At that point, I realized I was in control of the unlikeliest bottom in history. I could really play this to the hilt, I thought. I mean, what better way to make Tony pay for her past crimes than by being her master? I could take revenge from my high school self and get some pussy at the same time. A perfect evening all around. 